when you have somebody like Gates come in with their money and their influence to try to short circuit proper process, what you're effectively doing is cutting out the full range of voices that need to be at the table. So uh, it disempowers and, and, re and reduces the ability of um, indigenous people, farming communities, of entire countries to weigh in on the process and to, and to state their concerns or their priorities with respect to the technology. Um, and if you're dealing with something like gene drives, you're dealing with organisms being introduced into the environment that may be deliberately designed to spread in a way that easily crosses borders, or even if there are technological attempts to limit the spread, still would have the possibility, and no serious scientist would deny that. So in this kind of scenario, it's really important because there um, literally is the potential for gene drive, a single gene drive organism released anywhere on the planet to wind up virtually everywhere on the planet. So when you release an organism um, that I would equate in terms of its biosafety profile to be closer to that of a pathogen than a, than a traditional genetically modified organism because of its ability to spread, um, you're not really, you don't really only need the, the, the consent of the people that are directly affected at the introduction, point of introduction. But because that organism may in a few years be found in far more places, uh, I think you really have to think about, you know, impacts at a global or at least very large regional scale. Um, unless you can be absolutely assured that it won't spread, and that's not technologically possible. 